Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, it is the world's most watched professional wrestling news program, the Pro Wrestling Report. We've got big news on WrestleMania 23. Meet at just I've last heard of it. weekend from Detroit, Michigan. We're going to talk about that show. News on Raw, SmackDown, ECW, Hits and Misses, Top 5, Fan of the Week, and your That's a lot of show, All David. coming up in just a That's matter a of, of moments right here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the world's most watched professional wrestling news program known as the Pro Wrestling Report. This is Damian Nelson coming to you alongside the man they call Meathead. I'm feeling a little more comfortable because you are a lot farther away. From our studios here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, welcome to all of you watching us on TV and our television markets and all of you watching all over the world on the World Wide Web. This, Meathead, is the first show coming off the heels of the biggest wrestling show of the year. That, that is, WrestleMania 23. You and I both had the opportunity to be in Detroit at Ford Field. Which we maximized on. What do you mean? Oh, we had the opportunity, and we took advantage oh, of it. very good, very good. Thank you. At Ford Field, Detroit, Michigan, WrestleMania 23. Last week on this program, we did predictions for WrestleMania. We sure did. Uh, unfortunately, folks, my gimmick is not in the room at this time. I was Thank a little... God! But uh, my lungs are big enough, because you know who won? The money in the bank, and you know who won all the I other matches. Didn't but Jeff Hardy win that? We're going to go down it match by match on this very program. Opening the show was the money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Frank called that one, saying it would open the show. We <laughs> said he was wrong. Money in the bank opens it up. Edge take it out early. Big spot by Jeff Hardy. Eight participants, but there was one winner, and that winner was Mr. Kennedy. Now you wait. Bang. Mr. Money in the Bank, Ken Kennedy, as you predicted. As only I predicted. Make sure that rings. The match itself, opening up WrestleMania, potential show stealer candidate, it was a great match. It wasn't the best match. It Better than a... last year's Money in the Bank? No. Better than the year before's Money in the Bank? No. You know why? There because was no had... Shelton factor. No, because it had Hardys in it. That kind of... <laughs> all you mean it. the new Tag Team Champions of the World! Are they Raw or SmackDown, or what are they? The brands are now commingling with each other. As you predicted, <laughs> Mr. Kennedy wins that match. Yes, sir. From there, we go to Kane versus the Great Kali. Exactly. Kane lifting up 420 pounds of Kali and slamming him to the mat. However, not enough as Kali wins in that matchup. Yeah. But as predicted by this guy. So far, two for two. It We're was not going to be back in two and two. I'm just two for two. Who did I pick in that match? Uh, you're the producer with all the fancy notes. Here. I believe I picked Kali. I believe it doesn't matter. From there, we go to the ECW Originals going up against the New Breed, if you will. Or New Blood. Surprisingly, the Originals win that match. I did not say. Not surprisingly. I did it was say that by this the New guy. Breed would walk away with the win in that matchup. They did not. The ECW Originals win. What, how, how was the match made? Oh, uh, the match? That's why I'm doing them yeah. in this order, so you can get your gloat out of the way and then we can move <laughs> on to me. <laughs> the match was what it was. It was an eight-man tag match that didn't really make a lot of noise or thunder. Did you like it? Uh, eh. Well, I was doing something else, <laughs> to be honest with you. I was doing something else. I was watching a crowd or listening to the vendor swear. I, it was something. The World Heavyweight Championship was on the line as The Undertaker took on Batista. It, Batista yes. going in, clearly the underdog in that matchup. Undertaker, 14-0 at WrestleMania, gets the win, makes it 15-0 at WrestleMania 23. And we all picked The Undertaker in that one. That it was, was so easy. blatantly that, obvious. That one was easy. The match itself, it was a bit of a brawling match, one the that over-delivered. Uh, thank you. Over-delivered. Again, and I said in the uh, WrestleMania wrap-up show that you were able to see only on PWR. Show.com. Still up and still available. Yeah, One of our and most the PWR. Ever. Yeah, and the PWR uh, WrestleMania wrap up show. Batista came with his A game. Now, his A game, again, may only bring you a cup of coffee in the majors, but his A game, he gave it what he had, and you got to respect man for doing so. That is indeed true. Undertaker 15 0 at WrestleMania. He goes on with the streak, and now the World Heavyweight Championship. Correct. Battle of the Millionaires. Of streaks, it's, it's four for four right now. 
Battle of the Billionaires. Another blatantly obvious Umaga one. versus Bobby Lashley, ECW champion. Uh, the match, Otherwise known as, on the show still, Black Lesnar. Of course, we knew that it was going to be a bit of a comedy fest, if you will. That's Stone okay. Cold Steve Austin, the guest referee. Shane McMahon comes out with outside interference. The only outside interference in the entire evening. Which you commented on several times. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, Umaga loses that matchup after a stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. Bobby Lashley wins, and Donald Trump saves his hair from being shaved. Vince McMahon gets his head shaved at WrestleMania 23. He does have balls the size of grapefruit. No, no, no. Is that five what he said? for five. We all picked that one. You said it was obvious yourself. That's okay. I'm undefeated right now. Divas. It's like a WrestleMania streak. Ashley versus Melina in a lim lumber jill. I almost said lumber jill. Lumber jill match. Um, I went and got a beer. Yeah, you had many. This man slept. It was what it was. Ashley can't really work in the ring. Molina is not that much better. And it's not going to be a typical cat fight type of man. Cat fight! But your winner and still champion, Molina, as predicted by this that guy. Six for and six. And the other two guys on this show. Okay, that's okay. You're welcome. Six for six. To open up the show, we neglected to mention it was a tag team matchup. Ric Flair, Carlito. To open up the festivities, but not open up WrestleMania. Um, Ric Flair and Carlito on the undercard, if you will, on the heat match. How do you feel about that? How does Ric Flair and Carlito feel about well, that? And how does, how does uh, Chavo and Gregory Helms feel about that? Either, at least they were working. The other guys that weren't on the show all lined the ring, except for the boogeyman. Because he was coming to get Donald Trump. Yeah who apparently Donald Trump wanted him to go get a sandwich. The United States Championship was on the line. His MVP in all red, decked out with cheerleaders and pom-poms, goes up against Chris Benoit. Benoit retains the United States Championship, as I believe picked by myself. Do you have nothing to say? Who would you pick in that match, Meathead? My only loss of the evening was in this particular match. I chose MVP. Well, wow. how's that feel? Uh, not good. The WWE Championship. Correct. John Cena comes in in a Ford Mustang. Beautiful. Tears up the streets of Detroit. Shawn um, Michaels what a great, comes in. What a great intro. A How fan, did you feel about it? I thought it was... It made sense. It wasn't as spectacular as last year's introduction at WrestleMania 22, but it made sense. I can buy it that way. Okay. Shawn Michaels uh, is, is, is the opponent and the challenger for the championship. We see a fan get in the ring, which I don't know if the fans on TV saw. Someone jumped from the front row, got in the ring, and showed his twig and berries. And um, there's a lot no of controversy point. we'd had as Shawn Michaels sat in the corner on the top turnbuckle and said, as was let's get on with it. Uh, heard to say. I have a job to do, which I think was read much more into than it should have by the professional right. wrestling. Cena had a job to do, there. too. Exactly, and that job was wrestling in a professional wrestling match. However, it was Shawn Michaels tapping out again at WrestleMania. Second year in a row that John Cena has won by having two, one of the top guys in the business ever tap out tap to out. him. Correct. Uh, that match overall, the WWE Championship Average. stays in the hands of John Cena. Average. Um, I was okay with Cena keeping the belt because I thought he would keep the belt. Um, it was it was average. It wasn't disappointing. And... Uh, those of you that go to our uh, message boards and our forum... Which on, are blowing up, by uh, the yeah, way. ...on pwrshow.com, um, there's this thread that's been going on literally for almost a year called Cena's Boo Fest, or Why Do Male Fans Hate John Cena? I don't hate John Cena anymore. I don't like him. That's a pretty, sta uh, a pretty big statement. I don't hate John Cena. John Cena is what he is. He's there to make the company money, he's doing his job, and you respect him for it. These broadcast journalists have a lot of respect for John Cena. That was WrestleMania. Let's go to some of our fans' thoughts, Meathead. We've got several emails here from fans on their thoughts of WrestleMania 23. First is from Michael Fallis, who says um, he actually had a bit of a prediction and was along with Frank, saying Money in the Bank will start the show I and he, he was, will be victorious. He I thought he was going to predict right? that Meathead would have the most correct answers. No. Because that's, that would have been true, too. And Michael uh, sending a, that note in from the United Kingdom. This is uh, from Jack Jacob Milner, 
uh, from Huddersford. I, I, I feel I just have to say it. Does anybody ask you if you're Jack J Jacob uh, Jingleheimer Schmidt? His name is my name, too. Guys, love the show. Just a point regarding your it point from the WrestleMania wrap-up show regarding the attitude towards John Cena and drawing comparisons toward how Triple H got over. The main differences lie with two points. Firstly, Triple H had been in WWF for roughly four years and had rose through the ranks and had paid his dues, quote-unquote. Whereas Cena was handed the belt. i got to disagree with you on that one. John Cena was Cena not earned the title. handed the belt. Spent a lot of time in OVW paying his dues as prototype. the prototype and came up and was, you know, on SmackDown John languishing Cena, for a little yeah, while. Yeah, John and... Cena was languishing uh, as John Cena. He wasn't rapping John Cena. He became rapping John Cena during a Halloween episode of SmackDown where Stephanie McMahon was the GM and he dressed as Vanilla Ice. The second That's point John lies with up. the fact that Cena's ring skills are terrible. He has a limited move set, fails to sell any opponent's offense, and backlash from the wrestling community lies with the basic principle where the man at the top of the company and the man representing the company as its champion cannot deliver. Whereas, Triple H is a very good technical wrestler who has proven himself being involved in some of the best matches from the past 10 years. Can the same be said of Cena? He's been in a bunch of great matches, not some of the best matches. John Cena is... Again, a guy that's doing his job, but again, the wrestling community, which apparently we're a part of, we seem to be some of the lone voices. Because John Cena is just doing what he's doing. We're told. ahead of the curve. If we're he's, like Bell if, he's the 60s. if he's told to be a non sell bitch, then that's what he's going to be. It's a good, smart term you just used there. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jack from the UK. Next is from uh, Peter Van Dam. Don't know if he's related to Rob, however, he is from Detroit. I had the pleasure to go to WrestleMania 23 in my hometown of Detroit. It was an awesome show, and I had great seats. The ECW Ver Originals versus the New Breed did not deserve to be there. The arena was dead silent. The Money in the Bank match was awesome, but the question I have is, where does the man I picked to win? Kennedy! Thank you. Choose to use his title shot against. Where does he choose to use his title? Peter Van Dam asks um, from Detroit. You had a prediction during WrestleMania as to when that money in the bank would be used. You want to talk about that wrong prediction? Yet, sir? <laughs> that one wasn't on the record. That one was a little off the record or OTR. Or you predicted that the reason the Undertaker Batista match was so early in the card was so that Ken Kennedy, Kennedy can could come, come out on. and uh, cash in his money in the bank at WrestleMania. He had history with both. Undertaker and Batista. I think we've got a long, good journey in store for Mr. Kennedy. To I his absolutely for the championship. that too, that he will not cash it in early. You, you may, and we may, actually forget about it for a while. I mean, look um, what happened with Edge. Edge brought it up damn near nine months later. For Matt from St. Louis says, I thought it was overall a great WrestleMania. Money in the Bank was great. The bump with Edge and Jeff Hardy was incredible. Money in the Bank stole the show. Green Bay plunge on Hornswoggle. Wow, laugh my ass off with that one. He's a midget, though. That's assault. Uh, Kali had the... Okay. Whew. Kali had the best match I think he is capable of having. He did 100% better than oh. I thought he would, but that's yeah, still Yeah, I know where you struggled bad. right there, because you just thought that he said Kali had the yeah, best match. Yeah, we would have had to rip this up, burn it, flip it, <laughs> throw it around. Liked what MVP did in his match. Meathead, you had some comments about MVP at WrestleMania. I noticed MVP. MVP is now on the Meathead's radar. MVP, after his, um, you know, uh, coming out party, basically being the T.O. character of the WWE, MVP I'm coming. is paying his dues. Now, will people remember that he paid his dues if he gets a belt in the next six months? Who knows? Agree with what you and Meathead had said in the WrestleMania wrap-up about Deacon Dave, Batista, and the Undertaker match, which was basically that it over-delivered. ECW Originals versus The New Blood was a flop. I know it's not the old days, but come on, no hardcore rules whatsoever? Vinny Mac was hilarious. Hi. You can tell Trump has never done anything athletic in his life after taking that stunner. Yes, that was a pretty bumpy ride for Donald Trump in his uh, taking of the Stone Cold Stunner. But remember, he clotheslined and did a fairly decent attack on, on uh, I almost said Jeff Bush. I don't know where I got that from. Jeff on Vince McMahon. Bush. Uh, Lumber Joe match. I quote Meathead's favorite, JBL. It's Lumber Joe pandemonium. But typical diva match. WWE title match was great except the ending. It reminded me of last year. That's what the fans have to say about WrestleMania 23. And as well, on the message board, as you alluded to earlier, we had all kinds of threads and posts 
about what the fans out there across the world who watched the show thought about WrestleMania 23. In general, from those who watched on TV, the thought is WrestleMania was not a good show. I beg to differ substantially on that. And we got to take out the live event factor for us, at least, and for you know uh, Pete Van Dam, who was at the show as well. Mm -hmm. um, I still was able to look at it objectively. WrestleMania was what it was going to be. I mean, you got to understand that they're delivering classic wrestling matches. The ECW one absolutely should not have been on the card. Those guys, you know, maybe oh, those guys, represented. maybe those guys had to be on the card, but that match. And again, Elijah Burke, another guy that I've noticed over the last couple months. You'd like to participate in the experience. Elijah Burke is a guy that I definitely am starting to uh, dig. I mean, how long can he stay a heel, honestly? it's a good question. Um, overall, like I said, I thought it was a great show. It was a great weekend of festivities. The Hall of Fame induction ceremony was, was momentous as well. Sure. Uh, notable things, of course, Jim Ross coming out and admitting that uh, several things in his career were basically his fault and showed just general uh, uh, appreciation for the induction into the Hall of Fame in the beautiful Fox Theater in Detroit, Michigan. A Phenomenal. gem of the city, if you will. Phenomenal. Oh, yeah. One of four. So that was WrestleMania 23. WrestleMania 24 next year emanates from Orlando, Florida, my second favorite city in the world, and, right behind Las Vegas, Nevada. And, and you know, you absolutely know that he's already talking about it. He's already thinking about Orange Blossom Trail. OBT. That's, let me ask you this. The question I posed to the young lady at the hotel desk the moment we walked in, do you think if I asked that question again next year in Orlando, I'd get a different answer? They would already have a room prepared for you. Ha <laughs> uh, That is the top story, ladies and gentlemen, for this week. Let's move, let's move on now into WWE news. And let's talk about the Raw that was this past oh, Monday Night Meathead. Oh, it was pathetic, was it not? Oh, I, I'm normally not a jump on the internet right away after Raw is over type guy because I'm usually watching Raw about a day later. But you guys saw the thread. Right, dollar short. You guys saw the thread on the message board in our forum. I lit it up. It was pathetic. There was about 40 minutes of wrestling, which is normally not a problem for this tag team battle royal sequence that occurred. I like the end result, the Hardys winning the straps, taking the straps off of Cena. and The, um, the straps coming Michaels. off of Cena and Michaels is fine. Didn't care who took it, even the Hardys. Could have been even Lance Gate and Trevor Murdoch, and you'd have been fine? I would have been okay with that. Okay. I, don't, I thought it was going to be them for a while. I don't dislike those guys. I like those guys. Yo, yo, yo. Pop a 40 in. Check your rollie. It's crime time. The show overall really was terrible. terrible. All the momentum that may it, have started it, it in WrestleMania. It cracked all over it. And to, to finish it off, your boy, how come your boy couldn't... Oh, don't you dare. Don't you no, go no, there. No, no, I'm going there, and I'm going to finish there. Watch this. Main event, which was Lashley mm -hmm. versus... Umaga. And Armando Alejandro Estrada yes. on a two-on-one match. If Jim Ross's voice was trash, and I understand the man did his job on Sunday night, screaming and yelling and being passionate about his business, uh, and I'll finish, and I know you're prepared. If Jim Ross could not finish his job properly, a pitcher can signal to the bullpen or to the dugout and say, look, coach, I'm done. In basketball, you can tap out. In football, you can tap out. In soccer, you can call to the sidelines. If Jim Ross could not finish his job and do the call on that final match, what the hell was he doing sitting down at that table? Why was there not somebody else down there calling that match? Jerry the King Waller should not have been calling that match by himself. He crapped all over a match that might have had some potential, but it was done. We had the same conversation with poor Michael Cole when he lost his Absolutely voice. Absolutely no did. He had a horrible voice from the beginning of the program. JR lost his voice throughout the program. But it was, it was obviously awful to something start. wrong to, when, he, when he started. Was it really JR's decision as to whether he just sat there or if someone did replace him? Grisham was doing a little bit of ring announcing after Lillian had, you know, she was injured when her skirt was taken off. We don't know. We don't. We don't know. But honestly, to Are tell you the truth, people shouldn't show up and try. Shouldn't give it that effort. He, what effort did he give in the main event? Zero. Thank you. Congratulations, Shush! Jim Ross, on your induction into the WWE Hall of Fame. You ever search on Yahoo.com? Yeah. Number four right now, the number four most, searched, pro wrestling most searched personality is Lillian Garcia. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Many speculate it's because of the skirt incident on Monday. Mm. How funny was it when Vince put his head between her legs? <laughs> we talked about him just a moment ago. Todd Grisham is uh, now hosting a Major League Soccer program on the Fox Sports Channel. That program debuts this Saturday on Fox Sports Channel. Check your local, local listings to see where you can find the Grish. The Grish. That's what I call him. Jonathan Coachman, obviously, still working with some college football games. Well, not right now, obviously, but uh, still doing stuff on the side. So when it, what, what that does is it gives a credibility to the wrestling announcement, if you will. There's a great DVD coming out on Tuesday, folks. Make sure you check it out. Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen, produced by WWE. It will be out next Tuesday. So we saw some inductees into the Four Horsemen of Dusty Rhodes and uh, Harley Race at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And the Dusty Preacher, what? Uh, that was the first thing I said to you. Man, I swear, I I'm sitting in church. I said, Woo! You boys, you think that you need to be where you want to be, but you haven't earned, and you haven't sweat and bled and cried. If you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like a pig. Um, a big match that a uh, fan pointed out to us that we had not yet discussed, because quite frankly, I did not think it was ever going to happen, and we'll be surprised if it does happen on April 27th in Memphis, Tennessee. WWE Hall of Fame inductees Hawk Hogan and Jerry the King Lawler are set to square off. At the Mid-South Coliseum. Hmm. Isn't that wild? Isn't that something? It is uh, very interesting because um, I just and there's been rumors about it for a while. It's a battle of the legends, if you will. It's supposed to happen. Battle of the legends seven. from um, Legends of Wrestling video game. Smacky Wacky last week scores a 2.8 rating compared to Raw's 4.3 rating this past week. Up a bit, obviously, with the WrestleMania curiosity. just Which after they, the, again, the show. all over. They pooped all over it, yeah. Um, we talked about it last week. We now have more details on Joey Mercury's release from WWE. Joey Mercury, Mercury at WrestleMania 22 had apparently just after that event checked himself into rehab due to his addiction to painkillers. It's been a long-standing problem. Problem, however, showed up to the Indianapolis Raw before WrestleMania and the Chicago Raw before WrestleMania, stoked up, and was sent home. So basically, it's a violation of the wellness policy, said to be in very bad shape at those shows, and obviously has tried on his own to get better and will now have time to heal himself, um, courtesy of the WWE. Well, Eddie Guerrero technically would be the example. Eddie, Eddie. Eddie got really bad off, chemical-wise, life-wise, whatever. I mean, you heard the story. Vicky left him for a while, too. Um, if you be a good boy and you do what you're supposed to and stay off that crack cocaine, there may be a spot for you. Hell, they brought Joe Mercury back before and just showed up with Nitro again, and now they're cross branding doing pay per views and tag teams. And why are you gonna hang on that? Because why can't you grip, get a grip, and come to a? Why can't you turn your phone answer? off while we're taping a program <laughs> and come to a come to a point of acceptance with the fact I that the brands not. are commingling now and they are one. Oh, like I said that they should? And just go back to... Well, we don't necessarily need to go back that I'm far. Done. I'm so done. Go. It was Matty... I'm so, yeah, Matty DeFari, DeFerrari, who uh, had sent us that email reminding us about the uh, match between Hogan and uh, Lawler coming up yep, yep, yep. in just a little while. ECW News Meathead. ECW scores a 1.7 rating this past Tuesday night. That's a big number. Uh, as you saw on that show, a couple of good matches. Hardcore Holly goes up against oh. Snitsky. Gets his arm broken, if you will. Uh, Holly has needed elbow surgery for a little while now and will be taking time off to get that elbow tended to, which is why that angle was played out on ECW this past Tuesday. Uh, the surgery is said to be long overdue for Mr. Holly as well. Uh, How you, you know what, uh, Company guy that nobody will give credit to, Hardcore Holly. Yeah, he's been around forever. Sparky was Bob Sparky Plug. I don't like him one bit ever since the Tough Enough days when he went in and beat up the kids. Yeah. For seemingly no reason. Yeah. And I'm all about paying dues, and I know what happens when you get in the ring and you're training and you, you get initiated, if you will. But uh, I found that uh, he just basically was bullying a young boy. But uh, be that as it was, wasn't it Matt Capitelli who he did this to? Possibly. Um, How about Elijah Burke? Snitsky? Uh, Snitsky? I'm not. Sounds like Jaws. He is one hideous young man. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kane, ECW style. And more hideous. They should have superimposed his face over Kane's when they took the mask off and blurred his face for a couple weeks. 
Um, Elijah Burke. Many thought he may have been injured as a result of the hardcore match or ECW Extreme Rules match on this past Tuesday's episode. Which Vince said, by the way, there was never going to be any more of those anyway. So, Not injured at all. Actually participated in the OVD, OVW television taping this past Wednesday down in Memphis, Tennessee. They had a bit of a reunion of sorts of mm -hmm. all the OVW alumni um, down at, uh, in, in uh, Tennessee. Or Kentucky, rather. Sorry, Louisville. Marquise Corvan, period. Said to be not the happiest camper in the world in WWE. Uh, when he was brought in, he is allegedly under the impression he was going to be one of the top heels in the company. And as you see now, he sort of just sort of blended in with the new breed and not using period, not using the pounce, using the pounce, but not calling it that. And the only thing really that shows you homage to his TNA days is the reference to being the alpha, alpha male. Right, and that would be WWE's doing. They don't want somebody else's character. They want to make their own characters. That is true. Branding, merchandising, and so forth. Well, then you own it, you know, and you make money on it for the long term. It's a smart way to play it. It's a smart business move, much like this brand commingling. Let's move uh, on see, into... Now they're working together. It's WrestleMania, me, man. Can't you get it? WrestleMania's Let's over. move on into TNA News, total nonstop action, folks. Slammiversary, the pay-per-view, will be held in Nashville, Tennessee. They're going to return to Nashville for the first time since they left three years ago to start their TV, taping, TV tapings in Orlando, Florida. Venue information and ticket information is not yet available. As soon as it is, you'll find it right here on this program and at TNA. Slammiversary, are you interested? I'm interested in everything they do. Um, still not liking what they're doing on television, but I'm still interested. Rob Van Dam, apparently not so certain anymore to be hopping over to TNA when his WWE contract is up. That's all as scuttlebutt you, more than anything It is anything all else. scuttlebutt. Uh, as you saw at WrestleMania, RVD part of the winning team in that matchup. Not at all buried, as many people thought he would be. Uh, Maybe interested in taking some time off from WWE, uh, which they are apparently willing to grant him upon signing of a new contract. I agree. TNA uh, said not to be willing to or able to match what... RVD is reportedly making in WWE, which is somewhere on a downside guarantee of three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, if you note in st uh, TNA Sting and, and uh, Kurt Angle being the highest paid athletes at about half a million dollars a year for Sting, not sure what Kurt Angle's contract amount is for, but um, not so certain. We had said on this program several times that the logical move, the next logical step for RVD, was to hop on over to TNA. I believe I might have even said that, too. I wanted to put it all on you, but I, I might have said that, too. As usual. Uh, RVD, as long as you're happy, brother, just do what you got to do. Come and on. If, and if, I'm sorry to interrupt you. And if you're not happy with wrestling, go make some sandwich bars or something, or some special K-bars, you know. Got Kellogg's up there. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, some comments that Bill Goldberg had made referencing uh, whether or not he would be going into TNA. Well, he has now made another statement, and it is, I quote, he will be involved in a wrestling pay-per-view. Sometime soon. Okay. Don't know what that means. Don't do do know that he has met with Dixie Carter, who runs TNA, and uh, there might be a deal on the table. But he made some very pointed statements several weeks ago that would lead everyone to believe that uh, that is no longer an option for him. Is going to TNA with the ego that spewed in that comment. Oh, um, it's quote that he had a couple of ego. weeks ago. Why would they even bother bringing him in? Money, 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 money. I think they can make some money. Goldberg also says he would accept no less than half a million dollars a year. I know you don't miss him, because I certainly don't, but Shane Douglas, not around on uh, TNA TV for a little while, uh, said to be away still addressing some what were said to be obvious personal issues. Not exactly sure what that means. Yeah, you're the same guy that still lives in the lollipop land. 3D, the Dudley Boys, if you will. They're setting up a wrestling school that's going to be located right outside of Orlando, Florida. All kinds of entrepreneurial opportunities for these two. As you remember, Devon is opening up a smoothie shop down in, uh, for, uh, down in Florida, Melbourne, Florida, I believe it is. Um, we had reported that Batista was going to be making an appearance at that opening. That is no longer the case. He has been pulled. Uh -huh. He has been pulled because it got put out on the Internet and WWE said, Oh, what are things going on here, buddy? Um, so that is uh, the, the sum of TNA news. They've got a pay-per-view coming up in the next couple of weeks from St. Louis. Lockdown, all steel cage pay-per-view. Um, what do you think, Meathead? What is, have you seen what's going on with Sanjay Dutt and, and Jay Lethal? Sanjay Dutt apparently getting a makeover, and, uh, will be, uh, and, and Kevin Nash is the facilitator of that. We can call him the Jenny Jones of this whole thing. 
and uh, brought his old Oz uniform and costume from his WCW days, but it was obviously too big for Sanjay. Why? Well, I, I guess they don't think the player from the Himalaya is, is, is enough right now, and I think that properly used, Sanjay is as big a star as anybody that could have in that company. Great worker. Very great worker. Um, and Jay Lethal, obviously still moving Ooh, towards this yeah. Randy Savage tribute, if you will. Last week on TNA Meathead, they did what is one of the most clever things I've seen them do in years, <laughs> which is for the entire hour of the program. Bob Backlund, in the background, as crazy but as smart as he is, is climbing a step for the whole episode, just sort of happening in the background, which was perfectly executed. Very well done. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the hits and misses for this week, ladies and gentlemen. The first hit is WrestleMania 23 week in general. Lots of revenue generated for the city of Detroit. We had the per opportunity to mingle. <laughs> they need it. We had the opportunity to mingle with a lot of fans in Detroit. The entire city, Meathead, was completely engulfed in WrestleMania. Everywhere you looked, it was all about With the exception of one guy that had a son's jersey on and took our TV. Yeah, he was a bit of a prick. Yeah, um, great week and great promotion and amazing production by WWE yeah. that was all of the festivities during WrestleMania week. The next hit of the week was Russell, um, sorry, the Hardys becoming the new Tag Team Champions of the By World. By the way, you can tell we don't uh, cooperate on the hits and misses. They were my hits and misses, in case you hadn't noticed. You can bring your own if you want. And have I've it got a right piece of paper in front of you if you want. There. Um, and then the ECW Extreme Rules match is another hit from this past Tuesday's TN, I'm sorry, ECW outing on the Sci-Fi Network. Where are we? We're uh, in our Milwaukee studios. Okay. There is all but one miss for the week, ladies and gentlemen. That is the two hours that was raw. A substantial miss. With uh, the, exe with the uh, exception of the Hardys, I agree with you. On well, that. nothing new happened. We still see Shawn Michaels and Cena. Michaels wants his rematch, blah, no, blah, blah. No, I'm talking blah. about your hits and misses. With the exception of the Hardys and the tag belts, I agree with you 100%. Raw was abysmal. Raw was bored. Raw was snore, and even worse, I watched it live, so I couldn't fast forward through the crap. Let's go to the fan of the week. Okay. We're this week's fan of the going. week comes to us from La Mesa, New Mexico. Uh, he says, my name is Charles Sines. I've been a PWR fan for the past six months, and I would like to say that you guys are great with your wrestling analysis and knowledge. He says, thanks. I usually don't agree with some of your thoughts on certain situations, but hey, we all have our opinions on what should be done. First thing that uh, you guys always talk about is how most of the powerhouse wrestlers don't show their full race wrestling capabilities, whether they're being held back or that they flat out don't have any wrestling capabilities at all. Example, Goldberg. Thus not giving us fans the entertaining feuds that we would all like to see. Well, me and my buddy have been arguing which was the last true feud between two powerhouse wrestlers that truly held a great feud which showed true wrestling abilities even of their big size, that went on week after week after week and kept both the fans and backstage fully supportive and wanting more of it. My friend states the last one was Triple H versus John Cena, and I fully believe it was Brock Lesnar versus Big Show with Heyman on SmackDown about three or four years back, which included a nearly full month and a half of matches and the world-famous ring collapse that can be seen on your wrestling match connection. Oh, good. He threw a cheap plug. He plugged for plug us. Yeah. Um... Charles, that's, you know, good points. Um, I would say... I actually, I'm going to lean towards what I think you're going to say is uh, Lesnar Undertaker. Yes. Two big guys. Yes, Lesnar Undertaker tr trumps any other feud uh, between two big men over the last five years. Uh, Undertaker uh, and Brock Lesnar owned each other for quite a while in 2002 or 2003 it was. And I still will frequently watch the Hell in a Cell match from Unforgiven, I believe it was, or it may have been No Mercy of that year when The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar put on a clinic. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, you can see that ring implosion, if you will, on PWRShow.com in the matches section. Uh, it's one of the top five moments in the history of SmackDown, in my opinion. He has a PS on here, does Charles. He says, Meathead, JBL is <laughs> God. You don't believe me? You read it for yourself. <laughs> that is What's our, our guy's name again? Fan of the Week. Charles Sines Charles? of New Mesa, La Mesa, New Mexico. Thank you. That's all I'm going to say. Thank Sign, you very much for that signs email, everywhere. The signs blocking up the scenery, making my mind. Let's go now, ladies and gentlemen, to our top five for this week. 
And we'll start with the man on my right, because he, unfortunately, you're going to go for Tommy Thompson, he's in it now, you know. Can't raise as much money as Barack did from no lobbyists and no special Wrestling. interest groups. I got things to do tonight, buddy. Let's Bring go. it on, you. Top five. Number five on my top five list is going out to, uh, I'm just a Jaff So bro. A Jaff So bro. <laughs> Slick, brother, where you been? That was so great seeing Slick just pop up at WrestleMania 23. Now, if the... I were lazy, I'd name off the other four that came in there. But I'm not. Number That's four, a Carl Love trick. I know it is. Number four of my top five. And then five... number one would be Special Delivery Jones or something like that. Yeah. Number four of my top five list goes out to MVP. Again, I noticed. He's M coming. Uh, yeah. Um, MVP number four on my top five list. Number three on the top five list is going to go out to Chris Benoit. He's they real. put on an okay match yeah. that nobody cared about. I mean, we made comments during the show to each other. Look, everybody's getting drinks during the Chris Benoit match, but they stayed for Kane and Kali. Number two on the top five list will go out to Elijah Burke. Hmm. A, another guy I've noticed, a new guys to me, and I'm glad to watch them. They're interesting and they're fresh. So. Number two on the top five list. Number one, because of this entrance, I know you say it made sense, it fit. I liked it, John Cena. Hey, number one on your top five is John Cena. <laughs> that is respectable. And I just made it up as I went. And now the definitive top five list, ladies hey, and gentlemen. Hey, wait, can I one. plug one in real quick? Because I forgot there was one That's guy. That's a top five, not a hot six. There was one that I, I forgot to put in. I think his name was... Uh, Ken Audrey! You're obnoxious. <laughs> just obnoxious. <laughs> The definitive Kennedy. top five list, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the one all of you clamoring to your television sets to see this week starts at number five, which is good old JR. Who Making only worked, trying he to only deliver. worked. He only worked one out of two days. And, uh, one out of number three. four is the current TNA champion. His name is Christian Cage. Love what they're doing with him and Tomko and his smart. He's just a punk, is, is Christian Cage, and it Big works so beautifully of into. His angle, if you will. A lot of people, a lot of reports indicating that people are not sure if Christian Cage can carry the title in the company at this point with his in-ring abilities. They still believe him to be a tweener waiting for Joe or Is leaner or meaner? Number three? Number three is the new Tag Team Champions of the World, Matt I, Hardy. I see what you're doing. You're trying to one-up me with the big voice. I got Jeff it. Hardy, the new Tag Team Champions. I forget how many times. Was it eight or nine? Eight. The only thing going for the Hardys that's really good also goes for Jeff, and it's public domain music, but it's a great song. Number two is the new world heavyweight champion representing SmackDown. His name is The Undertaker. Big ups to Big Nasty. Hmm. Big Evil, actually. No, Big Nasty's okay, too. Big Nasty was Kevin Nash, wasn't it? No, that was Big Sexy. Oh. And the number one wrestler, ladies and gentlemen, the way I see it this week, John Cena, the man who retained wow. the WWE Championship and deserves a lot more respect than he's getting a controversial topic, Meathead. That is John Cena. It's a hot WWE topic. It's been a hot topic and not the store, but it's been a hot topic for the last six months, a year, year and a half, two years. And all that. Yeah. Wow. Now to PWR Interactive. Okay. We've got a ton of emails here. Frank is not here, so we'll try to stumble through this, ladies and gentlemen. This is the interactive version of the Pro Wrestling Report where you drive the show. We've got your emails here, and uh, we will read... Many of them, not all of them, so don't feel bad if you are not selected. But this one is from Tyler Richardson. Tyler Richardson says, I watched your pre-show for WrestleMania 23 and just wanted to agree with two things that most wrestling fans don't seem to think about. The women's title match, really, no one probably cared for even before it happened. Meathead was right when at WrestleMania the women's role was better put. Plus, Trish Stratus versus Mickey James was one of the best diva matches I had seen. And thank God, Mickey's back in the title run and came in and made her presence known. And the reason Mickey Monday. wasn't in that title run to start with is because they had the pimp, the Playboy issue. Love both JR and the King, but maybe shouldn't have put them both in the Hall of Fame at the same time. Uh, it's also hard to put wrestlers that deserve it in without being a filler or the head inductee. I've actually been waiting for them to put Owen Hart in, and I'm slightly shocked that he wasn't inducted this year. Not just because he is deceased, but because he was one of the best at what he did, he also never really reached his full potential in time. And if anyone disagrees with Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame, all I have to say is WrestleMania 10 versus Bret Hart. Where technically Owen carried Bret in that match. It's the, um, Owen beat Bret in that match, by the way. Not only did he beat him, but he carried him. That was a great WrestleMania 10 from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Get a Lex Luger, the Lex Express pulled in the mm -hmm. here. 
Yokozuna, biggest one of the best big men ever in the history of the business. Sure. J Man from Houston, Texas. Going back to Dallas in a couple of weeks. Um, stars. Dallas Stars. Love the show and I appreciate Meathead Classics constant. I can't read this. Nah, sure. But can. I'll read the end of it. It's so <laughs> immature, it's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, what was my name? Meathead Classic again? My question is about what I consider the most influential tag teams in the late 90s and early 2000s, which were Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, and the Dudley Boys. I agree. Seeing as Edge got that major push to the main event championship status, and the fact that Christian Cage is the reigning TNA champion, do you think the same success can happen or can ever be attainable by any of the Hardys, to a lesser extent, any of the Dudleys or Team 3D? The Dudleys would have to go ahead and lose some weight. The Hardys would have to go ahead and gain some weight. It's not all about how big you are. You know a lot about that. No, no, no. Sometimes you're too big. I've been told some. The next email is from Eric Hensman from Hoquiam, Washington. Meathead, is a, in a previous show you said that Cena and HBK were crapping all over the tag team titles. However, now that the Hardys are champs, do you think the titles will be defended on SmackDown also? I don't know, but they really need to do something with the tag belts. Look at all the tag teams that they've brought up that are now doing nothing. Deuce and Domino, what the hell are They're, they doing? Well, we saw them back on, we'll see them back on SmackDown, Smackdown this weekend. I understand. Back into the title hunt from their convertible. But what are they doing? I mean, crime time, Highlanders. God, uh, Kate Murder, I mean, all these teams. Well, at least there is a tag team division now. And look at over on SmackDown, you've got the longest reigning champions in 10 years, Kendrick and uh, London, who are still Only the because they champion. had nothing better for them to do. Damien, you said before that there are three different brands, which I did agree with till last Monday, where you had teams that aren't even partners, like The Miz and Johnny Nitro, or Johnny Don't Call Me Monday Nitro. Is this something we can in the... Was this... A way to see how other stars will do on other shows in case of a draft lottery. Um, Who knows anymore? Exactly. Here's the biggest problem with the Miz, folks. And if you plan on, if you've not watched SmackDown before you're watching this program, turn the volume down right now. But the Miz defeated Chris Benoit on SmackDown this Friday night. The Miz defeated Chris Benoit on SmackDown. Apparently, Chris Benoit is going to be the new NWA TNA champion in the next six months. Number three, he's not here, but I'll uh, ask it anyways. Frank, just wondering if you were nervous. Of how close Finley came to winning <laughs> Money in the Bank. I know he was. I bet he shot a chicken egg out his butt. That is from Eric Hensman from Washington. Next is from Jonathan McEwen. Uh, he says, why was that Raw built up their tag team division and then crapped all over them? A lot of people are using that now. That's okay. The world's greatest tag team should be holding the titles or have crime time. Because most of us older fans don't want to see the Hardys win the titles or a super group like Cena or HPK. Right. I agree. That's... Very profoundly written statement, Jonathan McEwen. Uh, Jonathan Torres says he's from the Bronx. That's okay. Is that where the Red Hook is? Or is that a no, Red Hook is different. Hey, you guys. Love the show. Keep up the good work. I have two things to ask you about WrestleMania 23. First, the Money in the Bank match. I knew Kennedy was going to win that match, but don't you think it would have been a great swerve in the end of either the Batista Undertaker match or the Cena Michaels match that Kennedy cashed in the Money in the Bank and defeated Taker or Cena? What do yeah. you think about that, video? I think that would have been great. Thanks Secondly, the Battle of the Billionaires, it was a no-brainer that Trump was going to come out on top. But if Trump was a true wrestling fan or truly understood the business, he would have put over not only Vince, but the business as a whole. Could you imagine the media attention that would have brought WWE if it was Trump who was shaved bald? The next wrestling boom could have happened because of that. Uh, very profound. The last one's attributed basically to Mike Tyson. Yeah. Basically. This is a epic. Michael from Long Beach, California will answer this one on the site. Um, and then Andrew Tully uh, has a question. He says uh, he is from Phoenix. He is the Phoenix Pharaoh. Okay. I'm sorry. This is your friend, Phoenix Pharaoh, hailing from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. That's very confusing. Andrew. It's Damien. He's always confused. I saw WrestleMania last night and was severely disappointed that Cena is still the champion. Now, as I said on the message boards, the man works hard, and I give him the respect for doing all he can to run with the ball the WWE has given him. However, him being the guy they center the company around is a complete joke. It's really getting to the point I am starting to get disgusted by the product. We all get to that point sometimes. Oh, we get to that point many times. I am grateful, especially when we watched WCW. Get I am out. grateful get for the right WWE now. for all the memories they have given me in the past. But anymore, it seems Jackets. like they completely crap on the old school fans and cater to the newcomers. 
I personally need to see a guy who you know wrestles worthy, being of cha worthy of being the champion. That is what being champion all of, is all about. I'd bit like to a, see Cena. A sermon there. I'd like to see Cena go in a Iron Man match, so we can see more than his five moves. So that way, that can end. Max Fitzgerald uh, says, "I'm a longtime wrestling fan. Found your show a few months back. I've been watching it ever since." I watched WrestleMania and was pretty disappointed. The atmosphere seemed lively for only four of the matches, which were Money in the Bank, Hair vs. Hair, and the two world title matches. And the matches did not really live up to my expectations, except Batista Taker was surprisingly good. Perhaps if Shelton was in the ladder match, preach it, preach it, preach it, brother, it would have been more entertaining. But I digress. Anyway, during the main event, I noticed yet again the extremely loud boos for Cena. It seems as though only young children and women are cheering for this guy and get their cheers drowned out by everybody else's booze. Here's the statement I'm going to make. I'm going to go big here. I'm going to go large here. If wrestling fans are passionately cheering a person, they're over. If they're passionately booing a person, they're over. Which means it's a good thing. The worst thing you can have is silence during a match. If people are booing John Cena, they're interested in John Cena. They know John Cena is there. They know that he is the champion, and they have passion about him, whether it be good or bad. That is the secret, if you will, Free of shot. professional wrestling. Boos are good, folks. You're a good heel. You're a good face. Doesn't matter what. You're getting cheered. You're getting booed. Any you're kind over. of attention is good attention. Exactly, which is Love why. me or hate me, but notice me. Years upon years ago, I said... If you don't like Jeff Jarrett so much, when we got to that point, simply turn your back. Don't boo, don't cheer. Turn your back. That is the biggest statement any wrestling fan could make. Think about the masses turning their backs on somebody who they truly don't like or don't respect. I believe the respect is there for John Cena. I believe that he is going to be WWE Champion for a while. I believe that much like a Triple H, he will be turned around and be a super uber face come the next few months. I'll tell you a little something about Jeff Jarrett. I booed Jeff Jarrett, and I gave him a, Hey, Jarrett, you suck! I've done that twice to him. Jarrett played the role perfectly, pointed me out, and he goes, And you swallow, or F you. Now, if I didn't like Jeff Jarrett, I wouldn't yell that kind of stuff. I wouldn't tell him he sucks, because he's going to use that for heat. I did it because I enjoy Jeff Jarrett on occasion. The worst thing I would do for Jeff Jarrett, if I was sitting ringside and I did not want him on my screen, is I would sit there with my arms folded and not make a face. Thank you for that statement, Damien, by the way. that Luis from New York says uh, this. My question is, can TNA and WWE go head-to-head -head in video games? And if they do, we is gotta there a chance we'll see, see another game. invasion? we got to wait and see on the game. They do have a game in production, and it will be out soon. From TNA. Also, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 has been announced. Uh, it's going to be available, I believe, on all your advanced systems, such as PS3, Xbox 360. I don't know if 2007 was available in those systems. Mm, uh, SmackDown, versus, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 was available first on 360, then it was available on PS2, and I believe it's going to be available on PS3. Also, uh, Nintendo Wii, I believe, will be in the mix next Did you play year. that? Uh, I don't have one of those yet. Creepy. Uh, this is from uh, Warner in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He has a few quick thoughts. Ric Flair needs to retire. One thing I don't get is Kali can destroy The Undertaker, yet Kane can do damage to him. Mania will be the worst in WWE history, and of course WWE also puts the really bad pay-per-view in Detroit. <laughs> no odds. No. Shane needs to show up more, that being McMahon, and Jarrett to the Hall of Fame after 10 years calling matches. Don't get me wrong, I like JR, but only 10 years. Werner, big problem here. Learn. Know what the history is. JR's been in the business for 30 years. He, uh, did, did, there's more life than WWE. There's other organizations. JR there. was JR. in WCW. Exactly. JR was in other organizations. So JR it's a bit more than 10 years. What WWE did smartly was only recognized, really, as 10 years in WWE, which is actually 14 years, uh, because of fans like you. And that's not a bad thing, but of fans like you will only recognize his WWE days. Correct. Rob Boyd from Northampton, England. That is actually across the pond. Yeah, you failed on the other couple ones, but that's all right. It's timed. Okay. Next. It's a timed event. Go. Uh, hey, guys. Damien, I agree with you on two things. WCW did suck, and it always stood for We Want Wrestle. That was for me, then. 
And two, JBL is a hilarious commentator. However, I agree with Meathead that the wrestlers should stay on their own shows leading up to WrestleMania or not. Just wondering what gimmick is your all-time favorite. Mine has got to be the man they call Gilberg. All-time favorite gimmick, Meathead. Think back to the gimmick Battle Royale at WrestleMania 17 no, no, if you need no, a point no, of reference. No, 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 no. I'll go with Glacier. Ooh, that is pretty good. Sub-Zero. Sub snow and all. God, that was in the blue light. Yeah, and then it would snow in the middle Man, of the ring. Man, that was painful. Mm -hmm. uh, this, that's the best gimmick of all time? Yeah. That's mine. Your all-time favorite? It's Glacier. It's the only one I can think of. Are you here somewhere. today? <laughs> you playing along here? I gotta go, baby. We gotta go. The Honky Talk Man. My favorite gimmick of all time. It'd be a little bit between him and Brother Love. Mm. I love you. I was a big JYD guy. The Jim Carrot Dog. Uh, next is from... That's it, actually, for emails this week. Got a couple more here, but we don't have time to get to them. Um, and that was this version of PWR Interactive, part of the Pro Wrestling Report. As you notice, folks, you'll see segments of the show now available on the website, so you can pick and choose what you want to watch. But I say watch it all. because I say you're going to watch it all anyway. You? Come on. And uh, you have the option of watching the full show or just segments of the show, and uh, that'll be new weekly. And remember, the new website will be launching soon. And we'll be bringing you an exclusive preview of TNA's Lockdown next and don't, week. And don't forget, it links to porn. We'll listen to you on ESPN Radio Saturday morning. And we will see you all next week right here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you soon.